David Cooter. I'm professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School and chief of hematology at the Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Uh, the first patient I met 50 years ago was a student at ITP. She fell on prednisone for a couple hour, a couple of days, and then relapsed. And I've been treating her now for 51 years for her ITP. So I, I got a long-standing interest in this disease. Our research group helped discover the molecule called thrombopoietin, and that was developed into three ITP drugs, one of which is remipolstim, the second is l thrombopeg, the third is avatrombopeg, which are commonly used to treat ITP. So it's a long-standing interest I have, and the best part about treating IT patients is you get to know them, and they become your friends, and I have many patients I've had for 20 or 30 years. Well, first line therapy ITP uh, it historically has been to take corticosteroids. Uh, if you're bleeding enormously, get IVID, but corticosteroids are the mainstay of therapy, uh, of the initial therapy. And our goal in recent years, and this is the evolution of care, has been to minimize the exposure to corticosteroids such that people take them for no more than six to eight weeks. <laughs> Relzabrutin is an interesting molecule, and this is where a lot of the Folks like me who treat what are called benign hemologic conditions steal mechanisms and drugs from our colleagues who treat malignant conditions in hematology. So Bruton kinase is a target for drugs that have been used to treat leukemia, but they have a lot of effects other than treating leukemia. A rils of Brutinib is a molecule which fits into a class of what are called BTK inhibitors, which do three things. They decrease the cells called B cells that make antibodies. Uh, they put the so-called macrophages that plate its near body with antibodies. And BTK is also important in inflammation. So when it will put BTK, any molecule, it will affect B cell productivities. It will also affect the macrophage destruction particles and it will also improve inflammatory conditions. Rules of Britain has been developed as a drug that will treat benign hemologic conditions because the other molecules used for malignant conditions affect plated function. They make the plates not work as well. So Bruton's, uh, 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 Rules of Britain is a nice molecule because it doesn't have any what's called anti-plated effects, but it has all the other effects I just listed a few minutes ago. So it's ideal in treating ITP and that will decrease potentially the antibody that is causing ITP, but also prevent the platelets which are coated with antibody from being destroyed by the cells called macrophages in your body. So we gave it to patients versus the, the, the placebo, uh, about uh, overall 29% of patients had a what's called durable response. Their platelet counts rose for two thirds of the last 12 weeks of their exposure to drug. And the placebo patients who got no, no rules of Brutinib they had no response. So this this is a, a nice il illustration that we have a drug that will provide a, a response in a, at, a, in a, at a significant level in patients who are highly refractory. One may say, well, gee, 29% doesn't sound very remarkable. Why not 100%? Well, again, uh, it's very hard to uh, make a, a perfect therapy for patients with this late, this late stage disease and we know our prior phase two studies with this drug that if you treat treated patients earlier in the disease course, not as the fifth line therapy, but as the second line therapy, the response rates were 50, were, were well over 50%. And what was remarkable about this study, and I think it's actually shown this patients and they, and they responded to the drug, their level dramatically, they feel they felt a lot better. Interesting about this is the patients who were on the placebo, I actually felt worse, you know, having no therapy for a total of 24 weeks. Equally interesting was that some patients who got the active drug since didn't respond with a platelet count rise, there was a sick increase in, in the, the quality of life improvement, that is fatigue decreased, even in patients who did count response, suggesting that other aspects of the rules of Brutal medication may be playing an important role in how rules of Brutal can affect the overall disease of ITP and improve the quality of life. I think that now is to, to finish all the data analysis we have before one would attempt to get approval from a regulatory agency like the FDA for this drug. 
I think that's the bureaucratic next step to make the drug available to patients. I think the research next steps are several. One is to uh, try the drug earlier in the disease course, give this drug to patients who have had ITP, not for six to eight years, but patients who have had ITP for six to eight months and see how dramatic the response is. The second aspect of treating patients with any new ITP drug, and the rules of Britain was a good example, is to see whether after maybe a year or two of therapy, you could withdraw the therapy to assess the question of whether the patients had been cured of the disease. And this is where it's important to think about ITP as an evolving, as an evolving disease. ITP by giving their high dose corticosteroids or removing their spleen. In the last 15 years, we've had new agents like TP receptor agonists, fostamatib, and rituximab that raise the plate count in a significant number of patients. Our current goal is to shift to phase three. Can we actually cure this disease and give patients long-term remissions of their ITP or possibly cure them by these immunomodulatory of, of treatments? Like with a question that one might ask is whether there are other therapies in the docket for ITP and what the future is for the field in general. And I'll be honest with you, this is an area where uh, a lot of new drugs, in addition to rules of Bruton, are being uh, studied. Rules of Bruton is probably the, more, the newest drug that's furthest along in terms of the process of making it available to patients. But our current goals are shifting from just making the plate account higher to making people feel better and to maybe make the disease disappear. So the rules of Bruton drug offers that opportunity for patients, but there are other drugs in the pipeline such as things that inhibit a thing called the BAF receptor, molecules that inhibit another immune target called CD38 uh, may come into play. And they're also, uh, again, I, I, don't, I think it's probably overkill using CAR T-cell therapies for patients with bad ITP. There are probably easier ways to treat ITP than exposing people to CAR T-cell therapy, which is probably best reserved for malignancies. But there's an, an evolving field here, which is going to be interesting because it's going to do two things. It's going to offer patients the chance of a long-term remission or even cure of the disease. But any drug work TP, it tends to export itself to other autoimmune conditions where the drug may, have, may be effective. And that brings to the light the recent study we presented here at this meeting as well with Rils Abrutinib, that it may be used in a comparable disease, but for red cells called warm autoimmune hemolytic anemia.